Julia, what do you think is the most important thing in the process of personal growth? Let me think, maybe their uh, education. Yes, that's right. And that's why each important social change brought about some changes in the educational system. Can you think of such a change, for example, in your country? Here in Russia, I'd uh, say October Revolution. That's right. And imagine, already in November 1917, just practically a few days after the revolution, a dedicated committee was funded and over one year's time they published over 200 decrees and dispositions. That's a lot of degrees and uh, which were the main changes? Well, the general program plan provided three main points. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, free and compulsory uh, education for all children aged 8 to 17. Then the unification of boys and girls school in mixed schools. And finally, the complete secularization of educational institutions, which at the time were part of the Orthodox Church. What uh, is uh, very different from uh, nowadays? Well, in general, I would say so. For example, the evaluation system based on marks from 1 to 5, which is still present in nowadays Russia, was introduced in January 1944. This kind of form was introduced in 1949 and soon became the symbol of Soviet schools. Though in reality it was based on the form of gymnasia from Tsarist, Russia. In general, the school was subdivided into four years of primary education and five years of secondary education. And what about politics? Of course, politics influenced the educational systems. For example, many teachers and also students became victims of uh, the state purges and also all handbooks and materials had to pass through state censorship. Works by very important writers such as Liskov, Turgenev, Tolstoy, Dostoevsky were completely erased from the programs and in general Russian history and word history were explained from the point of view of socialist ideology, becoming a real propaganda. The situation would change only in the 80s thanks to perestroika. <laughs>